President, thank you very much for honorable members. Thank you very much for having this opportunity to address you today on a very important issue, an issue of political implications, which are the recent agreements between Israel and the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, and uh, recently Sudan, and maybe many more in the future. Uh, on behalf of the European Union, I have welcomed these announcements for three reasons. First, because we believe that these uh, agreements help to establish a new formal relations between countries that have decided to put their differences aside and to engage in a peaceful bilateral cooperation. Secondly, we welcome these agreements because they can potentially enhance relations in areas such as technology, tourism, energy, trade, health, or regional cooperation. And third, because we believe that they could have a positive effect on other countries, as well as a more broadly on regional stability, which the European Union has uh, consistently tried to promote. However, Although these agreements bring positive developments, it's clear that they all focus on the broader regional picture. Israel did commit in the context of the normalization deal with the UA to suspend its plans for annexation of occupied territory in the West Bank. This was a positive step and we celebrate it and we will commit but the agreement themselves do not address the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And the Israelis' annexation plans still need to be abandoned, not suspended temporarily. Abandoned. Abandoned altogether. As we have always said, there will not be sustainable peace and stability in the region without a comprehensive settlement of the Arab-Israeli conflict and, in particular, the Israel-Palestinian conflict on the basis of a negotiated and viable two-state solution built upon the internationally agreed parameters. In this light, we should explore ways to apply the logic inherent to the normalization process to generate a direct and positive impact on the situation on the ground and to create the conditions for a meaningful political process between Israel and the Palestinians. In the last weeks, we had informal exchange between Palestinian Foreign Minister, Mr. Malki, and the European Union Foreign Ministers by video conference. I stressed the importance of the re-engaging in a meaningful political dialogue. I also emphasize this to the Israeli Foreign Minister, Gabi Askenazi, when we spoke by telephone yesterday. Last week, we saw the positive news that the Palestinian Authority will resume economic and security cooperation with Israel. We had actively encouraged this as European Union, but at the same time, the situation on the grounds remained very worrying, notably due to continued advancements of illegal settlement construction and a significant spike in demolitions. The recent decisions by Israel to open tenders to build a new settlement in Jivat Amatos, the first new settlement in occupied East Jerusalem is in 20 years, is of huge concern and uh, yesterday in my phone conference with uh, Minister Eskenazi, I expressed this concern and our condemnation of this initiative. We must work urgently to find a way to rebuild trust and confidence between two parties. We must avoid unilateral actions that undermine peace efforts. For that, relaunch of negotiation remains essential. We will therefore continue to work with members of the international community, including, I hope, 
with a new administration in Washington to uphold international law, to end the conflict, and to ensure equal rights for all. Only by working together, we will be able to end the current dynamics of perpetual confrontation and mistrust. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, honorable members.